So what are the benefits of systemization? In my view, they're perfectly captured by these three, the three S's. Every business needs all of these three. So just to kind of brief summary on the three of them. So sustainability, this means that the business can operate without heavy reliance on its owners. Two, scalability. This means that systems and processes are in place which will allow the business to grow without the wheels falling off. How would your business system cope if your turnover doubled? And lastly, sales ability. Is as, you, is as you'd expect. The business needs to be attractive for a future buyer. Having great systems and less reliance on owners increases the value of your business. And I think in terms of future value of the business, um, these are all such important points because if you ever do look to sell your business, and I think as businessmen, that is something in the long term you might think of. If, if you leave that business and someone else steps in your shoes, they need to know that the business is sustainable, they can scale it and it's a set sales and it's saleable for them in the future. So putting that in the context of, of today's webinar, there are four components of an app stack, which we're just going to touch on briefly. So firstly, you, you, you might all have custom existing apps or pre-built apps. Um, even kind of spreadsheets, which us as accountants always love with complex formulas, tables that all connect to each other. And these are all software tools in a business. However, how the information is passed between these systems is also part of the stack. So integration save you time, reduces errors and avoids the need for double entry. For example, does your website contact, contact us page generate a client in your customer database or CRM? Do proposals or quotes flow to invoice and job management? How do you reconcile online credit card payments? These are all called integrations. And this is an important point because most apps will tell you who they do integrate with, but not much of the detail how they integrate. For example, does your point of sale system send individual transactions to your accounting system or a daily lump? So if you're using zero, for example, does it send individual sales per day or will it say let's send it as a monthly lump or as a weekly lump? And these are all very important. The third piece of the stack puzzle is the platform the apps or systems are running on. So do you have in-house equipment? Is it outsourced? Is it in the cloud? If this sounds kind of like you're not sure what you're talking about, obviously, please speak to someone um, because th these are really important things when you're looking to to move into the cloud and move things digital. Um, the last piece, and this is a crucial piece, is how, you're back, how you back up your data and ensure customer information is secure. I think the global pandemic has taught all of us many things. And one of, one of these is, is how important it is to keep your data safe and accessible from any location. Um, there's also strict privacy legislation being introduced around the world. So you really need to make sure where your data is and if there is a backup. We're also seeing a lot of hacks at the moment um, and people asking for, for money to, to kind of release your data. And so it, these are kind of getting, yeah, getting more and more regular. So why is your app stack worthy of all this attention? So systems and processes are essential for growth in your business. As your business grows, bottlenecks appear. Technology and improved systems really help with these bottlenecks. And high growth businesses have these systems in place to handle, kind of to handle the growth as expected by your marketing plans. For example, the increase customer projects and or sales volumes, manual systems don't just won't cut, cut this. So your te technology stack has an impact on profitability. A bad stack can reduce your profitability by kind of costing you your sales due to lack of sales processes or increasing your costs due to wasted time or tasks being done in the wrong order or your inability to just manage that process. Um, so good data is critical to making good business decisions. And your system needs to provide you with accurate, timely data so you can make good business decisions, like whether projects are profitable or a specific product is making you money. The more up-to-date and accurate the data is, the better your decision will be. 
the technology stack can help increase your team efficiency and customer satisfaction. Having documented processes and systems is essential to ensure your business is efficient. You have a happy team environment and happy customers. And finally, technology provides a greater ability to work remotely. The tool, right tools will help you and your team work wherever, whenever they need to, on site, remotely, in the office. And I think this last year has shown us how important that is. So this is a really interesting um, diagram here, the productivity pr uh, pyramid, which shows how we can better leverage from our business and how we can work smarter, not harder, which I think, again, over the last year, everyone has found really important. So step one of the pyramid is about getting better at what you're doing by undertaking training, studying, continued professional development, which us as accountants have to make sure we do a certain amount every year, by getting better at utilizing the technology that you already have in your business. And this is really important, step one. Step two is then taking it to the next level. So it's increasing the number of people doing the work in your business either by employing people, contractors, to help free up more time to move up the pyramid. Remember, your team will need to know how to use existing technology and systems, and they need to, the systems and technology needs to be in place for the team to then be able to use it. Step three is then to invest in better systems to increase efficiency. So you've got your initial systems and technology, you've brought in more team to help increase um, the amount of capacity you've got, then it's about, okay, you've now spent the money to get the team in. How can we make them more efficient? So automated booking systems, automatic reminders to customers, automatically creating invoices and quotes. This is what we're talking about today. The technology you could adapt to increase your efficiency. By first, everyone on the team must already be using your existing systems and technology well, so they're better to involved in in finding better ways of working. So if your team are all using the technology and, and, and things that are currently in place, they're then better, they're, they're in a better place to be able to help you and say, okay, this system needs to be made more efficient. Or actually, why don't we look and see if there's any app that can help us do this? Step four is then taking it onto the next level and actually seeing if there's any systems or technology that you can invent and create your own IP. So um, I said Davis, Davis Grant were involved in a lot of, of R&D claims. And a lot of R&D claims is, okay, they've cut, they're trying to develop a system that they've looked at the market and there's two products that don't quite do what they need, but they need to create their own product. Or you've got one system here and another system which there's nothing out there that links them and then you're creating your own technology which links them. And that is all claimable to do an R&D claim. Um, so you might have zero, but you might want to integrate it with a time management or a stock management solution. You you're effectively invent the ways those systems talk to each other. And OK, you might not have developers internally. You might not have that, that kind of the skills internally, but you look externally. And if you've got the idea of what, how you want it to work, then there's a lot of firms out there that can help you. And lastly, step five is about innovation. So where you receive the highest possible return with the lowest possible time investment. At this stage, you might even consider throwing out a number of the systems you're currently using in favor of one that avoids the need for complex integrations. An example might be to invest in a more expensive technology solution that gives you far better information and a much better return. An example of this is the, is the innovation is a number of businesses who have thrown away their old cash books and are now fully digitalized on zero. So key issues. So you, you've looked at your, your app stack and how do you know that you're choosing the right apps for your business? So working out where to start can be very difficult. There are so many apps with so many different functions and deciding what to try first can be overwhelming. Consider what issues you're facing in the business. Do you currently have a system, a process, a technology? which is being underutilized or could help resolve the issues if it was perhaps best used. For some issues, perhaps training is what required and not technology. Perhaps the team just, just don't have those skills to use the technology that you've already got in place. So 
you might have an unbelievable till system that, that can do so many different things and can help automate lots of, of different tasks but your staff and even yourself just might not have had that training to be able to use the till system when you prioritize these issues in your business which you don't currently have a solution for it's time to undertake research on the most suitable technology find out what apps are available reviewing them and compare them can suck up hours of time and might be better actually spending that time looking for customers and helping the business grow. For example, Zero, which I know I've mentioned a few times, but I said David Scrum, we, we kind of we love Zero and we're, we're big users of it. They have over 800 apps in their marketplace, and there's thousands of apps globally. So it can get quite confusing as to what to use. So how do you make sure these apps you choose deliver the functionality? It's harder to find out what an app doesn't do than what it does do. So just when you think you might have found the right app, a new app might be might appear, which could be better and do more things. Um, and the apps are changing daily and there's new functionality coming out all the time. Um, so working directly with an app supplier can help can carry risk as the whole drive is to sell your product, not find the best product for your needs.